gentlemen, welcome to my 15th Let's Play, Banjo-Kazooie! Sorry about the little graphical glitch here, it's just something to do with the emulator, nothing major, so let's not waste any time and get right to it! And right off the bat, we are treated to some very creepy visuals! I guess this is where Banjo and Kazooie live! No, of course not! Um, yeah, this is the lair of our villain for this game, the evil witch Gruntilda, who, as you will soon notice, always speaks in rhyme. Well, at least until partway uh, through Banjo-Tooie, but we're not going to get into that until much later. Now, as you'll notice, she has an extreme obsession with herself, as if her freaking face being carved on carved on the side of a mountain isn't enough, she really thinks she is the hottest bitch around. And she spends her time doing just that, fishing for compliments from her sentient cauldron ding pot. Er, but there is this girl. You mean only one? There's only one person in the entire world that's better looking than this whole hag? I mean, come on! I mean, I can't really mention Humba Wumba since she doesn't appear until Banjo-Tooie, but still, only one person and it happens to be an underage bear? So this cauldron here is into old wrinkly hags and underage bears. That thing must be high on its own stew. Either way, the premise of the game is set. Gruntilda wants to be the hottest bitch around, but she finds out from Dingpot that she is, in fact, not. Gee, what a surprise. So she wants to abduct Tootie and uh, make her beauty into her own. So that's a very basic premise. But then again, this is a platformer. You can't expect too much of a story from a platformer, especially not a 1998 one. This guy here, Bottles, he's the one who's going to be teaching us all sorts of cool moves throughout the course of the game, but we're gonna get into that in just a moment because we're still in the opening cutscene, which is a bit too early to start uh, elaborating on that. Anyway, Tootie wants to go on an adventure as soon as her big lazy brother Banjo gets out of bed, and Kazooie overhears that, and she's desperate to go on an adventure, so she's like, WAKE THE FUCK OFF, YOU LAZY FAT TUB OF FUCK! Well, maybe she doesn't say it that way, but judging by uh, her usual language, she might just as well. And yes, Kazooie is a she, eh, even though it doesn't look like it. I love how Bottles asked, Is that your brother over there? I mean, I know you're short-sighted, but uh, up there in the sky, unless bears suddenly develop flight, I sort of doubt it. Then again, I guess I can't be too hard on him. I'm so short-sighted myself that I'm almost blind without glasses. So, well, apparently Tootie's doing a fine job of defending herself, judging by all the sounds and everything that's going on. 
but uh, nonetheless, you just know she's gonna get uh, abducted anyway, so... Uh, otherwise, this wouldn't be a very long game. So yeah, she's got her, so it's up to Kazooie to try and get Banjo out of bed. And, oh, apparently she managed to do it! Oh, what do you want, Kazooie? Yeah, doesn't seem to care very much about his sister. <laughs> and so the game begins, and we are now going to uh, be officially introduced to Bottles, who, as I said, is going to be uh, uh, our teacher of sorts throughout the uh, throughout this adventure. So you definitely want to seek him out because he's uh, going to teach you all sorts of cool moves. And uh, the other reason why you want to seek him out is because of his dialogue. He and Kazooie play off each other very, very well. They just keep tossing insults towards each other and not caring. Then again, that's par for the course for Kazooie. Seems like uh, the only person she doesn't totally hate happens to be Banjo. So, where did she go? Where, well, we're going to be introduced to that giant face in the middle of a cliff. Yeah, that's, of course, where Gruntilda lives, as if you didn't get the idea through uh, this opening sequence. Press A if you want me to teach you some basic moves, or press B if you think you're already good enough. I'm going to press A. Pressing B will give you all the, the basic moves automatically, but I want to show you guys uh, not only the dialogue, but I also want to talk about each move in a little bit more de detail. So, yeah, uh, he's not going to give uh, those moves to us right now. we got to hunt down each of the mole hills, and um, after that, we're going to be able to use the moves. Uh, that he teaches us. So, for example, if we try to do a ground pound right now, we can't. You absolutely have to talk to bottles. Uh, except if you press B for the moves on Spiral Mountain, anyway. Uh, he, so, he's talking to us about the camera controls right now. Uh, they are mapped to the C buttons, as you might have guessed. Uh, C left and C right to turn left and right. C down to zoom out, and C up to, mo to zoom in. And you can also use R to center the camera behind uh, behind Banjo and uh, well uh, okay <laughs> sorry about that uh, it was actually Z in Zelda so I'm I'm gonna be a little mixed up at the beginning of this LP so sorry if I press the wrong moves at the wrong time or something but uh, anyway this molehill is for the basic jumps of course, you probably all know how to jump in any platformer. Just press A, like that. And there's more to it. As he's saying, Kazooie can uh, give Manjo a hand. And uh, the way you do this is while in midair, you, pre you press and hold A again, and uh, you're going to stay in the air for a longer amount of time, allowing you to, cr to cover greater distances or avoid traps and stuff like that. And uh, there is also the uh, flip-flap jump, which is functionally uh, identical to a backflip, and you do it the exact same way as you do in Mario 64. You crouch using Z, and then you press A to uh, go in the air. No? Like this. Okay, sorry about that. I was pressing the wrong buttons again. Yeah, doing real good. I'm, I'm sucking so much on the tutorials. This is going to be fun. And it's not because uh, the game has bad controls on the contrary. It's just that, you know, I'm, I've been playing Zelda for so long that I still sort of have the controls for that game etched into my mind. Anyway, I just picked up an extra honeycomb piece. What these do? Once you get six of these, uh, your max health is increased by one. Note that you can't get past eight max health, even though there are enough uh, honeycomb pieces to uh, get you to nine, so the last six you can get uh, do absolutely nothing. Anyway, swimming controls. They are a bit different from um, Mario 64, actually. I'm going to explain them in a little bit more detail, because first, I want to head over there, because there's another extra honeycomb piece. This is an opportunity for to try out this, uh, well, Bottles calls it the double jump, but I wouldn't call it a double jump. It's just a longer jump, whatever. And there's an extra life behind the waterfall, in case, uh, 
in case you want one, it's right there. We're not going to be needing too many of these at the beginning of the, at the beginning of the game since it's rather forgiving early on. Um. Okay. Now, can I? No, I don't think I can uh, climb trees just yet. I have to talk to the bottles in that mobile hill over there. So, swimming controls. Um, if you want to go underwater, you press B, and if you want to jump while on the surface, you press A. This is great because you know, sometimes in other games, you're going to press A while swimming, and you're just going to do a stroke or something. Whereas here, you are going to jump out of the water, and you can use the so-called double jump to... Uh, uh, make you go faster and stuff. This is going to come in very handy later on, especially in water levels. So, um, as I said, this small hill, B Bottles is going to teach us how to climb trees, which is, once again, absolutely identical to Mario 64. You just hang on the tree, um, and then you climb and climb until you're at the top. Uh, you, you don't do a handstand where when you're at the top, though. You just climb like on top of the tree like this. Uh, now there's one of these trees that has uh, an extra honeycomb piece on top of it. Is it this one? Nope, but you... Okay, thanks for the heart attack game. But anyway, you saw it. Uh, the, the extra honeycomb piece is right here, so that's four... And by my count, I know where the next two are, so there shouldn't be any problem at all. We're not going to be missing uh, something on the freaking tutorial level. Oh, and by the way, as far as swimming goes, uh, you can either swim around slowly with Banjo using A, or you can swim uh, faster but uh, less accurately with uh, Kazooie by using B. Anyway, uh, this move that he's going to teach us here is the beat barge, which um, what you do, you crouch and then press B, and it's... Whoa, wonder what happened there. But anyway, it's pretty much useless. Uh, if memory serves me correctly, this is the only time where you're, where you're actually going to be using it in the freaking tutorial level, and you want to smash all four of the rocks that are here, because look at that, and there are extra honeycomb pieces. So yeah, big barge. About as useful as an undersea bicycle salesman, so... Uh, you're, I'm just gonna pass on this one. Now, uh, this place here is where Bottles is going to teach us about the basic attack moves that are at our disposal. So first, uh, he's gonna teach us the claw swipe, or rather, it's just, it's just a punch claw swipe that just makes it sound fancier and stuff, but then, um, <laughs> how about bird brain? <laughs> I, 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 I just love the interaction between these two characters. It's, it's... It's nothing, it, it's not RPG standard, but for a platformer, it's actually really good. Anyway, he just found a carrot for us to practice the punching with. And, as you can see, the range is so shit that you can barely do anything with it. So this is another one of these uh, more or less useless moves. It got upgraded somewhat in Banjo-Tooie, but um, still didn't find you, uh, myself using it all that much. Now, next move is the forward roll, where you just, uh, when you're running, you press B as opposed to uh, standing still and pressing B, which is when you punch. But, uh, okay, he's gonna put an onion here. At least I hope that's an onion. <laughs> okay, one more. <laughs> Stop rolling, I feel sick. Fortunately, this is yet another move that we're not going to be using all that much. It's more useful than the punch, for sure. But uh, now, thi this this here is the move that we're going to be using a lot for attacking. It's called the rat attack wrap. It's basically a jump attack. What you, what you do is that you jump, and when you're in midair, you press B to have um, Kazooie stretch out of uh, the backpack and... Uh, the enemy. So this is basically how it goes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get another one to show it to you. And I believe, yeah, there we go. It's our final uh, extra honeycomb piece. So now our max health is now up to six already. Now, uh, of course, uh, the the pace at which this will increase is not very high uh, for the rest of the game. Uh, they just gave us six because it was the tutorial level. But uh, in each of the nine core worlds, there are only two in each. So as Bottles instructed us to do, uh, we are going to head up to uh, the, the summit of the Spiral Mountain so we can learn what to do next. And 
it's sort of annoying, you know, at the beginning of the game where you don't have the talent trot yet, you have to run with Banjo and not Kazooie, which makes moving around a lot slower and a lot more tedious, I can tell you that.